Welcome to the Eating at a Meeting podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Stuckrath, dietary needs expert, certified meetings manager, certified food protection manager. I have searched the globe to find people and businesses who are creating safe, sustainable, and inclusive food and beverage experiences for their employees, guests, and communities. In each episode, you will find authentic conversations about how food and beverage impacts inclusion, sustainability, culture, community, health, and wellness. I know that sounds like a lot, but we're gonna cover it all. Are you ready to feed engagement, nourish inclusion, and bolster your bottom line? If so, let's go. And on today's episode, I am so excited to bring you Donald Contur. He is the founder and president of the Lip Smackin' Foodie Tours. And I have been on it twice now, same work. I know he's got lots of options, but I've been on the same one twice, and both of them have been a lot of fun. And you eat really, really well. Convention Management Association convention early in January of 2022. That's the year we're in right now. And and I had so much fun. And I the one I went on was the downtown, right? Yes, downtown lip smacking tour. Mm-hmm. L- downtown lip smacking tour, and for everybody to know, we went on three. We went to three different restaurants, and we sat down and we enjoyed these delicious dishes from multiple dishes from each restaurant. And I have to say, in January, I was following ve- doing veganary, so I was vegan plus gluten free, and my food was so good. I, I, Donald, it was, it was amazing. It was so good. So tell us what inspired you and how long food lip, lip smack and foodie tours has been around. Well, it's been around now coming up on eight years. Wow. So it's been some time. And the previous to lip smacking, I was a server in Las Vegas for over a decade. And for my hobby, I would go and try all the different restaurants in Las Vegas. There's so many, and there's always new ones opening. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I travel somewhere, I like to, you know, try the restaurants, go where, you know, the the locals go. And then when you when you go to these restaurants, you know, you can only order so many items, right? Right. So hopefully you choose the right ones. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to curate an experience where you get to try the top dishes from the top restaurants all in one night and then introduce a VIP component to the dinner reservation where either you're not waiting for your reservation and you know your your cocktails are served on arrival and allergies and dietary restrictions are you know exceeded for accommodations and so now you know it's it's grown from from when i first started doing tours to you know multiple lip smacking tours every day lunch dinner private tours for corporate groups tours in other cities self guided experiences so so it's been really really fun and you know we we it, we're proud to partner with the top restaurants in las vegas that is so awesome. And I, I remember meeting you at WEC in San Francisco. You were mm-hmm. one of the exhibitors. And I don't know how many years ago that was because we're going to back to San Francisco this year. But that, so it, that was in the last seven years or eight years. But yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of you. That's amazing. And did you, and I know on my January tour, like the tour guide, he said he was at one of the steak, the steak tour that's downtown or in, in, on the strip. And he's Mm -hmm. like, and Oh, what's his name? One of the chefs tapped him on the shoulder and says, stop talking about my restaurant. I want to talk about it now. And yeah. (laughs) And people are like, Oh my God. And it was, Oh my gosh. Blonde hair. um, Hell's kitchen. Who's that? Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay just tapped him on the shoulder and says, let me talk about, let me talk to them. So that's gotta be exciting as well. Yeah, it is. You know, we tell the story of the restaurant, what makes it so great. And, you know, we really kind of introduce people to places they maybe hadn't heard of. It's Mm kind of one of those things like if you know, you know. For example, Milos is a partner of ours. It's they fly their fish in from Greece almost every single day. It's the highest quality Greek food you'll find sometimes all over the world. They have, you know, about eight locations. And, And, you know, if you know, you definitely know Milos is amazing. But if you haven't heard of it or haven't been introduced to Greek food, it's the place to try it. Same with Javi, you know, top Mexican Dungeness, fresh seafood enchiladas. They make their salsas throughout the whole day. They don't just batch them and use them for for the for the day. They make them throughout the entire day so they're as fresh as possible. Wow. 
Yeah, it's okay. really neat. Fresh pineapple that they use for their margaritas. You know, most restaurants, they use the can. Right. They're, they're blending fresh pineapple. So we're really, you know, highlighting what these restaurants are doing that makes them so special. And when we were talking earlier, you, you, what I liked about it too, is that you're, you get to taste all of the top restaurants in one night and you're tasting multiple different dishes from each one of them. Right. And it, cause it wasn't oh, yeah. like one and one and done you're like, see you later go. We were there and like, cause I just did it last week. It was one I like, I had four dishes myself doing at each restaurant. Dairy mm-hmm. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. It's not just a progressive where you're having like an appetizer and then an entree each restaurant, they serve you uh, their spread of their most famous items. And then we finish, of course, with dessert. And if you are vegan, gluten-free, gluten, no dairy, whatever it might be, pescatarian, no pork, you know, the list goes on. The, the, the chefs are like super proud to showcase what they can do in your wheelhouse. And it's not mm-hmm. just, you know, this is what we have for you. It's like, oh, okay, we like a challenge. Let us wow you. So we take those opportunities to, to wow our guests and show them, you know, that the chefs can create something that can accommodate them that, that, you know, takes a lot of love and passion behind it. Yeah. And, and I do, and also like the cocktail package as well, you know, you can, or they had a different kind of drink at every different restaurant. I, I was, I don't drink, so I was having club soda, but everybody had, it was interesting to watch them taste the different drinks that they had at the three different four, because it added a bar in there. So there was four different drinks. So Mm -hmm. that was another nice added thing to the, to the package as well, which I know is an add on, right? Yes, it's optional. Okay. So if you if you okay. don't drink alcohol, you know, or if you just mm-hmm. prefer to order drinks as you go, or if you want to okay. jump in on the adventure and try the craft cocktail that the the, re- the restaurant is, you know, most popular signature cocktail, we have the package, which is nice because when you arrive at each restaurant, they have your cocktail served upon arrival, which is always nice. And yeah. we do do that for our larger groups, especially if you're doing like a corporate event, you don't want your attendees to have to, you know, place their order, wait for it to be made. You want to walk in and have either your your, your glass of wine or, or your craft cocktail and it's paired with the food. So it's nothing that's sugary. It's nothing that's really spirit forward. It's well-balanced, goes nicely with the food, refreshing. So yeah, it's, it's part of the experience. And then we also have the option after for a helicopter over the strip. That one does quite oh, well wow. in the evening. Mm-hmm. So you go to all the restaurants and then a helicopter over the strip after. We have been doing our ultimate steakhouse tour a okay. lot lately. It seems like people are really wanting to indulge and enjoy. So this experience takes you to three of the top steakhouses in Las Vegas. And this is the only lip smacking tour that's not within walking distance. All the others, okay. the restaurants are very close to each other. So we stay within okay. the resort. This one has luxury. Tra- so we take a limousine from, from steakhouse to steakhouse. Wow. Uh, and it's usually smaller, more intimate groups or, you know, people that are celebrating birthdays, milestones, that sort of thing. Okay. And then I noticed that, and I just, I was in Cosmopolitan the other day and there was a huge line outside to get into Momofuku. Do I say that right? David Chang Momofuku, and, yeah. Right. And I had never heard of it before, but I know it's on your tour. And and one thing about your tour is that you don't have to stand in that line. You just zoom right through. Right? Yeah. It's a VIP. It's kind of like the nightclub host walking you right past the red velvet ropes. Uh-huh. Uh, we have our table waiting for us. And so we go right to our table shortly after seating, the food comes right out. You know, if you do want to order a cocktail, you have a couple of minutes to do that before the food is on its way out. And so, yeah, it, it does have that VIP aspect because it's the spectacle upon seating. You know, there's menus already sitting on the table of what you're going to have custom printed menus. So mm-hmm. it, it kind of acts as your reserved sign. And then they parade the cocktails out from the other side of the room is coming your food. And it's this big, you know, song and dance spectacle. And it it gets a lot of wow factor from onlookers that are kind of wondering, you know, what's the commotion? Who who, who is that? And how did they get everything so quickly? And and then once we're done eating, use the restroom before we depart and uh, do it all over again. Now, okay, so let's go back to the walking thing too. I liked the one downtown, which is the only one that I've taken twice now, but you give all the history of downtown, which a lot of people don't know. And like, here's the oldest hotel in the city. This is what Tony, Tony, mm-hmm. Tony, from Zappa, 
Tony Shea from Zappos did. So talk about that a little bit, not to give away the, everything that you do, but yeah. That's part of it. And a lot of people don't expect to have the, we call it the dinner and show component because you're not mm -hmm. just eating. There is a guide, very knowledgeable that not, not only tells you about the food, but all the in-betweens between the restaurants, whether it's a speakeasy, as you mentioned, downtown, they have the container park with the repurposed shipping containers and the Such fire breathing cool mantis from Burning mm -hmm. Man. So you get the backstory on how downtown began and the revitalization with all the new restaurants, you know, what's been going on in the area. So it's it's a lot more to it than just eating. It's It's very entertaining, very engaging. And so we talk about, you know, cocktails that you you have to order that aren't on the menu that come with the flour that you put in your mouth numbs uh -huh. your mouth you take what? a drink and all the flavors are very intense you haven't taken that lip smack no yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> got you on the hook with that one you do uh, definitely wow that's pretty cool and how many tours are there so we have yeah, resort and casino. We have Venetian and Wynn. So okay. it goes between those two resorts. They're next to each other. Right. We have Within Resorts World. That's the new hotel that just opened. We also have Within Virgin Hotels. That's another new resort. So all new restaurants, Todd English's Olives. And then we have Downtown, which you've taken. And also another one downtown in the Arts District, which is a little bit further from the Fremont Street area. And these are, again, all new chef-driven restaurants where these chefs have used, used to work on the Strip have gone out and opened up their own venues. They're, you know, they're getting in the best ingredients, the highest quality products that they're accustomed to but has this neighborhood hospitality behind it. And we also have one all within Chinatown. Las Vegas okay. has a Chinatown not too far from the Strip. And they're not all Asian restaurants, a Spanish. Yeah, there's a French restaurant that does that's very popular. So again, unassuming Strip malls and plazas. But when you step through those doors, you're immersed in a venue that's, you know, really has authentic authenticity behind it and really amazing food and great service. You just have to know about these places or, you know, that sort of thing. Right. How have the, I'm, I'm assuming that the restaurants are like so gung ho about this. Do you have restaurants on your waiting list to get on a tour? It's interesting. The ones that are always reaching out are sometimes they don't understand that we keep them within walking distance. So we can't go, you know, 10 blocks away or, or, or right. they're not, they're unfamiliar with the caliber of restaurants that we visit. So, you know, we're not looking to do like, you know, street foods, like tacos, nothing wrong with tacos, pizza and hot dogs, but we're doing more of an elevated food tour. There are food tours in other cities and it's becoming very popular, but I always like to refer to ours as the Vegas version. So we do go prime time. Most food tours are just held during the, the day when the restaurants are quiet. We like to go when it's packed and we go to the, you know, the finest restaurants. These aren't restaurants that need business. These are restaurants that, you know, we highly suggest you make a reservation in order to get a table. You know, when we walk through these restaurants, you'll see the bars. There's not even a single seat available to sit at the bar. Wow. So yeah, it's pretty special what we, what we do. Now you mentioned, there's two things that you mentioned at the very beginning, one corporate and two that you've got the self-guided tours and the self-guided tours are called the finger licking foodie tours, right? Yes, we started that about two years ago for people who don't want to mix and mingle with others. And it does really well with locals because a lot of times they okay. feel they don't need to have the guide to give them the backstory or they don't want to necessarily mix in with people from out of town. So we do these self-guided experiences where you just check in at each restaurant under your name, like a reservation, and they give mm -hmm. you the experience where you know they sit you promptly, the tasting menu comes out, your check is already settled because it's a pre- ticketed event. Oh, awesome. uh, gratuities are included. It's a great way to restaurant, but you do lose out on the tidbits and the fun of, of mixing and mingling with others. And then the complete opposite end of the, of the spectrum from the self-guided are the corporate events that we do. And we do a lot of them because groups are always looking for something fun and unique and different and memorable. And mm -hmm. most groups, you know, maybe they've been to Top Golf a, a couple of times already. They're looking for something maybe they haven't, the group hasn't done before. And most people haven't been to multiple restaurants in one night. And the big thing, the takeaway from the Lip Smacking Tour is, you know, you wouldn't think of this unless you've been on the tour, which you have. Every time you go to the next restaurant and you sit down, you end up sitting with different customers, different attendees. So the networking yeah. is invaluable. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And that's what people, you know, the food's great, of course, but the mixing and the mingling and the networking that takes place during an event like this is something that you can't foster organically and no better way of doing it over food and drink. So you exactly. do, go to, yeah. you know, four different places, you, you, you know, you're trading business cards each time and you're not even being interrupted by the, the wait staff to ask you, you know, did you, did you have a look at your menu yet? It's already curated for you. You just sit back right. and enjoy it. And that's really good. And I like, and I don't have my card. I don't know if you have one there, but you know, it's a, it's a card like this size and it's branded lip smack and foodie tours. Can, can somebody do their own branded card? Oh yeah. We do that all the time. Okay. Yeah. We'll do everything from brand the the shuttles for picking them up. It'll have, Mm -hmm. you know, their, their company name on it. We'll put their company logo on the menus. We've had apron aprons with their logo and the executive chef has Mm -hmm. signed it. We, we have all these different options. We've branded the helicopters before with the wow. company logo. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of other neat things that we do. Just reach out. I don't want to give away too many secrets, right, but they're definitely exactly. special. That's really cool because then, and I do like the fact that like we, what was the first restaurant we went to downtown? What's downtown Carson Kitchen. Carson Kitchen. And then we walk, what, a block and a half to theory or therapy, therapy. And we were getting that history, but mm-hmm. it you leave and then you're wandering down the street and you're chatting with other people. And then you go into this other restaurant and the way the seating is done, you're totally sitting with somebody different. Mm-hmm. And I love that because I could even, you know, on the one I just did, I could get to chat with all of these because I went with a group of people from Europe, you know, all the different people from Europe and the one at PCMA, I was meeting different meeting planners and different hoteliers. So I love that because, and, and I do your great point that you're not being interrupted by the servitor saying, what do you want to order? And then, especially with dietary needs, I've got, you know, you got to take eight to 10, 12 minutes to figure out what it is. I mean, my plate was, and on all of them were so good. Like, here you go, Miss, here you go, Tracy. You know, they all handed it to me and they knew exactly who I was and, and what it, what they were serving. So I love that. It's pretty turnkey. We just asked yeah. the meeting planner to provide us with a list a couple of days before the event mm-hmm. with every all the attendees with allergies, dietary restrictions, and we'll arrange transportation to pick the group up from the hotel. We'll mm-hmm. you know bring them over to maybe it's the Aria or the Venetian, wherever we're take, take, having the tour take place. How the experience lasts about three hours, depending on the group size, could be a little less than three. And then we'll arrange a shuttle to bring everybody back if people want to explore and and stay and not get back on the shuttle, they're welcome to do that, whatever it is. But what's fun, too, is the following morning when everyone's back at the trade show, everybody likes to talk about what they did the night before. And the lip smacking right. tour always gets the buzz. You know, you're showing them photos and you're telling you're talking about an experience that and, and all the people that didn't get the invite are always wondering, well, how come they didn't get the invite? <laughs> Right, exactly. And I love the fact that you did the your tour guides take photos of the whole group together, you know, and then share those out as well. Airdrop at the end. Yeah. Mm hmm. I, I don't yeah. know. I, I didn't get mine this time. I need to ask Mark where that one is. But Another yeah, thing and- we'll sometimes do is we'll actually give the photo instead of to the entire group to the event planner who can follow up, you know, thanking them for attending. Here's the photo from the event, kind of a reminder of the memories that they had. Yeah, no, I think, oh, that's a great idea because it's like, thank you. And it's a thank you for coming. And we really appreciate you being here. And here's a memory from last night. So that I think that's a great idea because it's, it, it keeps not that you don't want to be connected with them, but it keeps the meeting planner or the host connected with them, those attendees for sure. And a way, great way to follow up. So what about your tour guides? You've not only curated the restaurants, you've curated your tour guides. Are they also former servers like you? They are. They're not your typical tour guide. We can't take people who haven't been in the caliber of restaurants that we visit and put them in that capacity because these are high volume, you know, very highly detailed partners that we have. And when you're dealing with allergies and dietary restrictions in large groups, when I say large, you know, we've done groups, a couple hundred guests, wow. and, and it takes a lot of a fine, you know, attention to detail mm-hmm. in order to do that. So we have all of our uh, tour guides 
come from like either a fine dining background. One of them was a pre a trained chef, went to a culinary school. They're very, very passionate. They're very knowledgeable and dedicated, very, you know, just a class act all around. You know, we do take, you know, really well-traveled people on our tours all the time. And again, it's just not your typical food tour. This is the Vegas version. And our tour guides are amazing because as great as the restaurants are that we visit, we'll get nonstop comments about how great the tour guide was. Uh, Mm -hmm. So it's like you're dealing with amazing food and amazing restaurants. And they're here talking about how the tour guide was amazing, made their entire trip. You know, people are constantly telling us that this is the highlight to their entire trip in Las Vegas. We hear that constantly. Like this was the best thing they've done. It was the highlight. You know, you're spending a couple hours with with people and you're making mm-hmm. them feel special because they're here from another place and they don't really know anybody else. Right. And you're 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 talking and eating and drinking and it's just it's it's unbelievable how special of an experience this is. Well, and I think it's also really important because, and I think you said this before we started, was that there's so many restaurants in Las Vegas and some close and some open and you never know and you can't get into, you know, Hell's Kitchen or wherever, but this is your opportunity to do that, right? And for probably... I mean, and pricing wise, is what what's the what's the price range? Start at one twenty five. They're unbelievable for what you get. One twenty five. Exactly. I'm like trying to get into Hell's Kitchen and this place and this place and this place. Is you're going to spend well over one hundred and twenty five dollars per person, right? Yeah. And so it's oh, getting yeah. you the, with four dishes, four little tastings of each, each thing. Yeah, I mean it's a bargain for sure. It is. Yeah, and yeah, it, it and is. a really really good experience. The there was something you said that it went away. I don't know what it was, but it, I, I just, it's, it's been a lot of fun the two, two times. And I told when I just went with IAC, I'm like, they're like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, you guys should do, you should add the lip smack and foodie tour to the end of the, the conference. And so we did it at the end, but oh, I know what I was going to say is that I was reading up on you and I found an article in Forbes magazine and the guy was writing about you, but he was telling in his piece, he's like, well, the Los Angeles, Mike Hiller, who I guess is the food critic for the Los Angeles Times was saying, everybody thinks they know the best restaurants in Vegas, but Donald Contorsi really does. <laughs> and and he told this guy from Forbes, who I probably should know his name. What is his name? Stan. Larry Olmstead. He's like, you, and so he was telling Larry Olmstead, you have to do this tour. And so he did. And he was like, he was right. So yeah, Larry uh, just did the downtown one yeah. maybe a week ago, two weeks ago uh-huh. that he was in yeah. town and, you know, they come out to see like what's new in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And it's so, it means so much that, you know, we've been around, so we're not necessarily right. new, but we're always showcasing the latest and the greatest restaurants. So even right. if you, you know, come back, like we went, we went to Barry's downtown prime over at Circa you know, that yep. restaurant is, is mm-hmm. just over That's a year where old. I've been to that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I do take a lot of pride in, you know, taking people to the best restaurants. You know, right. it's not, you know, we're not, we're, we don't, you know, we really go to the best and we serve the, rest- the best dishes. That restaurant and that, so that I did that one in January. And so the one that last week was different, the different ending, but Circa is so cool. The way it's designed, just the aesthetics of the restaurant are really, really pretty. And you would not expect to see that, you know, in, you know, necess- and I'm not bashing Fremont street, mm-hmm. but not necessarily in a Fremont street hotel, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the first one, mm-hmm. new build in 40 years down there. Really? Uh, oh wow. yeah, and it's stunning. You know, they've got the yeah. world's largest sports book. It's twenty-one and up. So you know, every time you go to the bar, you don't have to pull out your ID. If once you're past those doors, it's mm-hmm. a big party. Everybody's twenty-one up, twenty-one, and can have fun. And and Barry's is, you know, that's a heck heck of a place. I mean, it's stunning. Yeah. The, the food. Right. You l- look around, you'll see celebrities in there every night. Yeah, it was really pretty. And I just realized that they did check our ID when we walked into Circa. And I was thinking that maybe it was the restaurant. It wasn't the restaurant. It was actually the hotel or the casino. Yeah. Wow. That's really And then cool. when we have our large groups, you know, mm-hmm. 100 people, they'll, they're kind enough to have multiple staff there so that the right. process goes 
smoothly. Yeah, because that can mm-hmm. take forever. The, uh, the therapy is a really cool. I, I love downtown with murals and stuff, but I love the fact that the mural, and I was telling somebody this the other day, the mural in therapy was designed and on the wall inside there, but he's a tattoo artist. He is. Yeah. King that Rock. Is, yeah, that it's a beautiful mural, but, and I love that you give that kind of also detail about the restaurant and, you know, the people of the city that are contributing to a variety of different aspects of food and beverage and the city itself. A lot of people don't think of Las Vegas to have outside of the mega hotels and the resorts. Mm-hmm. They don't realize uh, sometimes that there are standalone mom and pops, which the proprietors are the chefs. And right. these are the, where the locals go. You know, a lot of times people want to see, well, where do the locals go? And on this tour of ours, you get to experience that the streets are walkable, you know, where the it, it's just the freestanding buildings that, you know, right. have history behind them. The, for example, therapy before it was a restaurant, it used to be a 99 cent store and, you know, they opened up the roof and they, they built it out and it turns into a nightclub at night. They call it relapse. And, you know, there's just so much to share uh, about our city. So yeah, we take a lot of pride in not just the restaurants showcasing, but, you know, being ambassadors of Las Vegas, one of the greatest destinations. Yeah. And it is, for everybody to know, Fremont Street and that tour, downtown tour, is a completely a, like a 360 or 180 from the Strip. I mean, it is, you, you're like in your local neighborhood, right? It's kind of like that. And so it's, if you want to get away from the hustle and bustle of the Strip, you definitely want to take that tour. So it's really a lot of fun. So what some of my stanchions, you know, for this, for the podcast is what are some best practices that you've seen from the restaurants and from, you know, over your eight years, you know, in curating, you know, safe, sustainable and inclusive experiences? Communication, you know, taking the time to sit down and not making it an afterthought. You know, if you just leave it up to, you know, the moment it's, it's not, you're not taking the time to ensure that you're going to exceed expectations. And what I mean by this is things that can happen, like, you know, you may not think of this because of the dynamic of the, of the tour that we offer, the curated experience, but you know, you might, if you don't communicate properly, you might end up getting accommodations where you're serving beet salads at each restaurant. You know, mm-hmm. and so you want to let the re- restaurant partner know, you know, we're already featuring beets or, you know, we're already doing, you know, whatever it might be. This way you don't duplicate dishes. One of the other things is the details. So, you know, most of the time uh, people with restrictions or, you know, they they are accustomed to waiting until everybody else is served and then they're mm-hmm. dealt with as if it's a nuisance. Well, what I like to do is I actually like to serve them first. And I, what ha- what, I got mine first. It's awesome. And it makes you feel special. And as long mm-hmm. as it's a, a beautiful spread that you're proud of, everybody around you will look at your dish and go, wow, you know, maybe I should have said I was vegetarian. That looks amazing. Mm-hmm. So rather than, you know, and, and people won't start eating until everybody served and you don't want to feel guilty for having a restriction and others are letting their food get cold because you're having to wait for your plate. So we serve you first this way, you know, it's all taken care of and nobody is trying to serve people the wrong items because it's already taken care of and it's out of the, out of the, you know, element. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, so just putting thought into it, you know, if, if you don't take the moment to, Look at it from an operation or a guest perspective. You know, I've had everything from people say, well, you know, let's put all the vegetarians there. And you just can't ostracize people like that. You know, whether it's whatever their reasoning is, everybody has a choice to sit wherever they like and they should be, you know, inclusive and not felt, you know, so, so we do things too. Like, you know, you mentioned that for IAC, a lot of the guests were from Europe. So when Mm -hmm. we're speaking about, temperatures or, you know, we're giving these tidbits on, you know, how many feet something is, you know, we have to think they're, they're using a different system. And so we translate in, in theirs and ours metric. And so it, it, it allows them to feel like inclusive opposed to 
speaking a completely different language and not knowing who your audience is. Okay, I'm going to jump to speaking different languages. Do you have individuals who speak multiple languages that can translate for people? I wish our guides, you know, they they can't have everything. They're exceptional. One of them speaks Spanish, but a lot of times we'll have interpreters, uh, you know, third party. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for our larger groups, we'll, instead of us wearing the microphone, we'll put the microphone on the interpreter and the tour guide will share a little bit more of a condensed version because it takes a little extra time. And, you know, so, so we do have that, but no guides that are speaking okay. fluently in other languages, unfortunately. But luckily for us, food is a universal language. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Now, what about thinking about individuals who utilize wheelchairs or hearing impaired or blind? How do you manage that on the walking tours? Because, And I want to say that every restaurant we went into was it was accessible on the downtown one, right? Yeah, they all are. It's part of mm-hmm. the ADA. Right. They're all accessible. You know, we have tra- trained our guides to, you know, if the elevator is has potential for the guest to get lost trying to find the elevator, well, then you go with the el- guest in the wheelchair up the elevator and you instruct the other guests to wait for you at the top of the escalator. Now, vice versa, if the elevator is very visible, you know, you could instruct the guest in the wheelchair to, to meet you on the second floor, maybe push the number two in the elevator for them. And you walk with the group around the corner up the escalator. Everything is ADA accessible. A lot of the resorts, they actually have at their bell stand wheelchairs that they'll give you on loan, complimentary. So we'll arrange that for our guests if they didn't realize that we do walk at a moderate pace. It's not rushed, but you know some people have shows to see after the tour. So we do want to keep on our moderate pace, but yeah, we're, we do have guests, you know, maybe they use a a walking stick because they are Mm -hmm. blind and we have to take into consideration that maybe they prefer to sit on the end of the table or somebody who may not be able to stand on a, on a, on a stool because, you know, for all, you know, they have metal in their leg that you can't even see in it and it pulls you know they can't stand on a stool so these are things that you know we over communicate with our restaurant partners to let them know before we arrive you know we need a a certain type type of table this way when we get there if only one table is waiting for us and we can't sit at it for you know whatever the restriction might be it's not embarrassing to the guests because there's no place for them to sit that's awesome that's awesome and i was just going to ask you you know what do you wish people knew? What do people wish knew about what you do? I mean, you've explained a lot. I mean, you go into a lot of details. Is there anything that we've missed that you want people to know about what you do that they wouldn't think about? I mean, there's really so many things like I touched on, but there's so many more from experience that I've learned. But I will say that all of these things are what makes this lip smacking tour so special. And I mean that where people are constantly saying it's the highlight people are, I've had people tell me they've come to Vegas specifically for the tour. I've had groups come for the tour and have their flight right after. I mean, the stories go on. I have, I've had multiple things, uh, guests dining at the neck at at the restaurant from the tour the following day with a couple that they met on the tour people coming back on tour saying that they still keep in touch with so-and-so from their first tour from facebook you know it goes on and on it's just to to condense it i'll just tell you it's super special everybody loves it we constantly strive to exceed expectations and you know we're we're just so thankful for all of our amazing tour guides, our amazing restaurant partners, everyone in our industry. You know, we spoke about WEC and, you know, I've been a member of the meetings industry for for some time now, and they've embraced me presenting a new experience, a group experience Mm -hmm. that, you know, we didn't think we needed, but, you know, I've always felt that, you know, you can't give an experience by just saying, do you prefer the chicken, fish, or short rib, you know, it's, right. that's, yeah. let's, let's do more, you right. know? And I, and I have to agree that you, you've gone above and beyond. It's really a great experience. So thank, thank you. you. I mean, and I think that comes from your background too, from a fine dining restaurant. And that's what you, I think that's what you've learned from your previous experience in doing that. And I think you've taken that and really, you know, use that to curate these tours. So Kudos to you. 
because it, it really you. does add another element to that. So how can everybody get in touch with you? I put it up there one time, but I'm going to put it up there again. Lip Smack and Foodie Tours. And you can follow you on all social media platforms with that same name, right? Correct. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Okay. Check us out. Check our reviews out. Yeah, you've never seen reviews like this before. I mean, it's the highest rated experience. Just it's it, yeah. My email, Don at lipsmackingfoodietours.com. We're very okay. responsive. If you ever need us to put together a lip smacking tour in another city, we've done about six other cities outside of Vegas. Awesome. Yeah. So we could curate a high end dining experience for your group. Okay. Fantastic. Yay. Well, thank you, Donald. You really help elevate the meetings industry and the food and beverage aspect of it. So kudos to you again. I really am excited to, to have participated twice now. I need to go and try one of the new tours or one of the other tours now that I've done the downtown one twice. But I look for, I don't know where I'm going to see you next, what convention, but I hope to see you soon. And everybody, if you, again, lipsmackandfoodietours.com and on all the social media, media platforms. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Trace. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And everybody, until next time, stay safe and eat well. And we'll talk to you at the next time. Have a good day. Thanks for listening to the Eating at a Meeting podcast, where every meal matters. I'm Tracy Stuckrath, your food and beverage inclusion expert. Call me and let's get started right now on creating safe and inclusive food and beverage experiences for your customers, your employees, and your communities. Share the podcast with your friends and colleagues at our Eating at a Meeting Facebook page and on all podcast platforms. To learn more about me and receive valuable information, go to tracystuckrath.com and If you'd like more information on how to feed engagement, nourish inclusion, and bolster your bottom line, then visit eatingatameeting.com.